This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a great weekend. It is 6 a.m. right now. You know, Stella, we miss sports so much at the Connert household that we're recreating hockey games inside of our garage at this point. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, you can go to my uh, Instagram page and check it out, but uh, we tried to yeah, get the excitement built and you know, the, you got to get creative in this day and age. I was just about to say that so many people getting so creative. Good morning to you at home. It's six o'clock. Hope you enjoyed your weekend as well. I'm Stella Escobedo. Let's go ahead and get right into your headlines this morning with now 5,836 confirmed cases of coronavirus here in our county, an increase of 141 cases. Officials are carefully watching how some businesses are slowly reopening. And despite a request from county and state health officials to stay closed, one of our local casinos will now reopen with several others following suit later this week. News 8's Netta Ronpour joins us live now with the latest on this. Netta? Casinos in our area will be reopening this week. Viejas Casino opening this morning. In fact, they're opening in the next couple hours at 8 a.m. They tell us they expect to see a lot of buses coming down this road here in Alpine as they get ready for this reopening. Uh, take a listen now to a video they posted on Twitter. At Viejas Casino and Resort, the health and safety of our guests and team members is of the utmost importance. So when the Viejas Casino posting this video talking about new safety guidelines at the casino, including cleaning protocols using UVC technology, a form of ultraviolet light, a wavelength that is supposed to be cleaning a lot of the uh, things inside the casino. Now, last week, the governor did send a letter to the tribal governments asking them to reconsider reopening. The Los Angeles Times reports the governor told them he understands partial reopening of casinos is crucial to tribes raising government revenue to take care of their communities. Communities, but he also wrote that he cannot stress enough the risk of COVID-19 transmission remains a serious threat for all Californians. So these tribes are sovereign nations. They're not under the authority of the state or the county. Now, on Thursday last week, San Diego County Public Health Officer Dr. Wilma Wooten did change her tone regarding the reopening of casinos, now saying that the casinos will work with the county to keep the public safe. Sunday, Hamul Casino released this video statement. And when we surveyed our database and our team members, people are ready to come back and game safely. Team members are ready to come back and work. So all four casinos in our area did list safety guidelines on their websites and the majority will require guests to have their temperature taken before entering the casino. According to the American Gaming Association, there are 55 other casinos already open nationwide. So again, back here live, Viejas expected to open here at 8 a.m. Hamul will open to select casino members today and then a public reopening will be happening there on Thursday. Siquan will be opening on Wednesday and Valley View on Friday. Day. We are live here in Alpine with the latest. We'll send it back to you. Netta, thank you. And we are also getting a closer look at how Sequan Casino is taking extra precautions ahead of their opening on Wednesday. They hired a local company to spray disinfectant throughout its properties. True Clean claims its product lasts a lot longer than others. At 6.30, we're going to hear from them about their cleaning protocols. And two weeks after Texas began reopening, the state reported its highest number of new cases Saturday with its most deaths late last week. In fact, at least five states saw an uptick in coronavirus cases, which included South Dakota, Arkansas, Virginia, Virginia, Louisiana and Texas and by today 48 states have relaxed stay at home orders. It also marks the first day that Texas gyms and offices can open at 25% capacity and in Michigan tens of thousands of auto workers will head back to work. But with more tests being distributed, we are expected to see more cases. The more we test, the more we know how many people actually have the COVID-19. Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks are set to partially reopen testing social distancing at popular attractions like Old Faithful. Some live sports returned over the weekend with no fans. Let's take a look now at the latest coronavirus numbers worldwide and here in the U.S. Worldwide, there are more than 4.7 million cases. The U.S. has more than 1.5 million of those cases. More than 89,000 people in the U.S. have now died, but the good news is more than 281,000 people have fully recovered. Today, more testing sites will open in parts of the county, and it includes the Logan Heights Family Health Center. That location is open today through Friday between 8.30 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. No appointment is required. 
There will also be a drive through testing site at SDCCU Stadium today through Saturday between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So just be sure you call 211 if you are planning on scheduling an appointment to go there. And as the U.S. continues to ramp up coronavirus testing, the FDA has now granted emergency authorization for the first testing kit that lets people take a nasal sample at home. It's made by an Austin, Texas-based company called Everlywell. But as Imtiaz Tibaz reports, they are not alone in this race. In laboratories around the world, the race is on for a rapid, low-cost, and most crucially, highly accurate coronavirus test. Dozens already on the market are in the works, but concerns over accuracy continues to be a dark cloud hanging over the quick-use diagnostics. Here at the British medical startup Sense Biodetection, they believe they've achieved just that, a rapid COVID-19 test with results in under 10 minutes. It's the brainchild of molecular biologist Dr. Harry Lamble. We use what's called a molecular chemistry. So we're targeting the genetic material of the virus and we're amplifying it many millions of fold in order to be able to detect it. Lamble expects the diagnostic to receive FDA approval in a few months and has partnered with the Wisconsin-based medical manufacturers Philip Medicize to produce their product as cheaply as a home pregnancy test. So how does it work? Well, you take a sample from inside your nostril, dip it into this chemical solution, use a pipette, Draw the liquid out, pour the fluid in here, switch it on, and you're done. At the White House, which is suffering from its own coronavirus outbreak, it's a great test. President Trump has given a ringing endorsement to Abbott Laboratories' rapid COVID-19 test, but the FDA is warning preliminary research has identified potential problems with Abbott's 15-minute diagnostic, including false negatives. Whatever the case, it further complicates the already complex quest for a quick, affordable, and accurate coronavirus test. Imtiaz Tayyip, CBS News, Cambridgeshire, England. Now for your morning rush. Starting today, our state's undocumented, undocumented immigrants can apply for disaster relief payments. They can get up to $1,000 per household under the governor's COVID-19 emergency assistance plan. To apply, contact the Jewish Family Service of San Diego, which is handling applications for San Diego and Imperial counties. Local churches are starting to resume services despite warnings and guidelines from state and county officials. Rushing Wind Ministries held its service in the parking lot. However, the main building was still open to the public to walk through. Some faithful followers we spoke to explained why they don't believe that this should apply to them. Churches are essential because if 7-Elevens are open and liquor stores are open and tattoo studios are opening, people need to hear hope. In Chula Vista at Hilltop Tabernacle, Sunday services were also held. Most churches are continuing to hold virtual services. And some more county offices will reopen today for limited service, this time in Kearney Mesa. County offices, officials, excuse me, say offices in Escondido and National City will follow shortly thereafter. Plus, starting today, a limited number of campers will be welcomed back to Lake Jennings. The campground side of the property will be reopening. There will be several new policies to keep everyone safe, including no tent camping and every other campsite will be used. Only registered campers will be permitted, so there will be no visitor or day use access. The recreation side of Lake Jennings will remain closed. And now part of the Imperial Beach shoreline is back open after new water quality tests. Recent sewage runoff in the Tijuana River had forced officials to close the beaches from the border to Seacoast Drive. Beaches at the south end of Seacoast Drive up through Carnation Avenue are now back open. County officials say sewage runoff from the river is no longer contaminating the water.